What's up everybody? So day three is over with at the Olympics and we got 57 kilo up on the board. Let's see what happened. So just like before, you have my picks here in the green that I did before the Olympics. And then over here you have the other day. Let's just go ahead and run through and see where we went, where our picks were and where they weren't. So right off the rip, we have Canada coming through to the semis. We did good there. We have France coming through to the semi, great. Yoshida of Japan coming through to the semi so far, so good. We even got Kosovo coming through to the semi. So we were pretty accurate leading all the way up into the semi here. So let's take a look and see how the other ones went. We were right here. Bulgaria won the first round. Montero from Portugal won. We were off here. I had Hungary winning, but she ended up losing. Okay, it looks like she got thrown and then time ran out. Um, Korea won the first one. Great. Stole. The Georgian made it through. Boom. I actually had the Georgian losing. So that's interesting. I'm going to have to go back and watch that match. Um, down here we had the Israeli coming through. So pretty good. I had Russia beating China. The Chinese girl actually ended up winning. Serbia won the first round. So that's good. Down here, we had a major, major upset during the day because the Taipei girl ended up losing and the Slovenia made it through. She wasn't able to upset the girl from Kosovo, but she ended up coming through the bottom half of the draw, which we'll take a look at later. So overall, pretty accurate throughout the day. Um, had a little bit of mishaps where he picked you know, the wrong finalist, I guess, but we were able to get to the semis pretty good. I think at that level, um, they're kind of interchangeable at this point. There's no real standouts. I did want to see a Canada-Japan final with Canada pulling out, but at the end of the day, that didn't happen. So let's blow this up and let's take a look here, um, down here and see what happens. So right here, I had Kosovo down here. Kosovo actually ended up in the final. And then I actually had the Israeli beating the French girl, but because Klimkate lost in the semi, uh, we have Jessica down here. So at the end of the day, we make this really big. I had Canada, Japan, Kosovo, and Israel as my top picks. And here you can see Japan, Canada, and Kosovo just kind of interchange there. I had the French girl losing. Um, so overall, it was a, I feel pretty happy. It was a very accurate, I think, assessment up until the end. I think if you fought this division the way it is now, um, again, a few times, this it leaves the possibility for this to happen. But there was a standout in this division, right? Um, the Slovenian girl. And I just kind of wanted to walk through her day here just because uh, it was fairly interesting overall. She wasn't somebody that I had picked. And the reason for that was right down here where... We had her versus Taipei. Now, if you haven't been following the weight class that often, uh, you probably would write off the Taipei girl even though she's eight in the world. She does fully live and train at Komatsu University in Japan and actually the head coach of Komatsu is actually sitting in her chair at the Olympics. So just something to keep in mind, she's not somebody that just does judo. She trains at one of the best places um, for females, especially in Japan. Um, overall and so down here uh, you can see that this this match I actually watched this match right here um, live as it was happening and interestingly enough Slovenia I think comes in for that first attack if memory serves me right but they hit the ground and for the next two minutes no mate no standing up the Taipei player almost pins her like four times right she ends up getting her leg out girl recovers she gets her leg out again girl recovers she does Sankaku again girl recovers so two minutes go by and then the Slovenian girl stands back up on the feet I believe does like an Ochigari um, and then ends up falling down and then the refs out of nowhere penalize Taipei and I remember just listening to Neil Adams going how'd they do that she almost pinned her four times and he said that the refs didn't, you know, contemplate or put or weigh into their decisions, the actual Nawaza. So when you're thinking about the meta of judo, 
Um, that might be something that the IJF is going to have to look at later on after this Olympics and actually think to themselves, do we start penalizing judoka for not being offensive on the ground and only being defensive, right? If I get my hand on your back and my hand on the sleeve and I'm bringing my hips and you're being defensive, we shido you. Well, if I'm being offensive on the ground and you're just playing defense, should you get a shido? Vice versa, if somebody is dropping on you all of the time, we see this in the meta of judo when somebody's doing a drop attack and sometimes it can be hard. I, I found that struggle in my career where you're working and for some reason they just keep dropping and, there's, and you feel like there's nothing you can do because every time you get the hands on to do your judo, they're back on the ground. They're doing sumis, they're doing drop seos, drop tiles. And it's like, man, I'm getting penalized, but I feel like I'm chasing them all, all the time. Well, if it was actually a relationship between, you know, when they dropped, but you actually engaged in an effort on the ground, should it be one and one, right? You're attacking on the ground, they're attacking on the feet. It should be an even trade-off in my mind, but in the way the sport is actually ref today, that's not the case. So you see the Taipei girl actually get down, then get down another Shido, and you could just see her frustration building. And then it actually ends, what is this, eight minutes later, because the Kosovo girl comes in for what I believe was, um, it was like an offhanded Sode, I believe, slash Osoto attempt. And what happened was the Taipei girl went to come around the waist and she actually ended up grabbing the hip just below the belt. It was very incidental. It, I don't think it would have affected the throw had she not done it. But the way the rules are written in judo is if your hand grabs anything below the belt, it's considered the leg, okay? So a lot of people in national level of judo, especially in the States, they think that the leg, the pant is actually the leg, that's not the case. Even the skirt of the jacket when it's tucked into the gi, if it is below the belt and you're grabbing it or you're touching it or you're pushing off of it, that is technically the leg and it's an instant shido. So the match ends on that instant shido. And we saw that the other day where an important match had ended a match early when we looked at Georgia versus, uh, who was the Georgian playing? Was it, was it Abe at 60 kilos where he shot a double under um, right off the rip and he grabbed the belt with both hands. And again, instant Shido right off the rip. So I just want to point out and I want to take a look at just her stats overall that I pulled from judo base. Here's her Olympic result here, um, world championship. This is actually a junior world, it's not a senior world. We have nothing at the masters, nothing at the grand slam level as far as medals. And then we have a couple continentals. I'm assuming that this gold here is a junior European championships. But when we look at her day as she's going through this, right? Her current world ranking, um, I think at the close of the Olympics, I think they've updated it, so I'm not sure. But it's currently 15. So her first match with Mongolia, which when we look here, right, I actually had her beating. I think stylistically it matches up, but 13 in the world. Then she fights number eight in the world and wins. So she's outperforming herself here, which is amazing. But then she falls to Kosovo, um, gets thrown free pwn. And then again, look at beats world number nine and then goes into the bronze medal match against world number one. So she obviously had the day of her life. It's super important to know. Um, I'm sad that the Canadian didn't pull out their first um, gold medal for women or maybe all of judo. Nick Nicholas Gill took a silver. So that might've been their first gold. Um, sad to say she wasn't able to pull it out, but there are the results for 57 kilos.